Hi, good evening. Happy Wednesday, happy midweek service, and uh, happy, happy 36th uh, anniversary, church anniversary to our church, LA First Church of the Nazarene, LA First Church of the Nazarene Filipino Congregation. Happy 36th anniversary sa inyo lahat. And on next month, October, it will be the uh, LA First Church of the Nazarene 125th anniversary as the first church of the Church of the Nazarene denomination. So, good evening, happy Wednesday service, happy midweek service sa inyong lahat. And um, welcome back to Walk Through the Bible. So, this uh, 52 weeks journey of a lifetime. This is to ensure everyone reads the entire Bible in a year, lalang lalo na sa aming simbahan. We started, no? Siyempre, simula natin din sa Old Testament, uh, particularly sa Pentateuch, yung first five books, at yung tinatawag na the law. Uh, last week, we talked about Genesis. For today, we'll talk about Exodus and then following Wednesday, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So, sabi nila, eh, si Moses daw ang author ng Pentateuch. So, tingnan natin mamaya kung si Moses ba. So, last Wednesday, we talked about Genesis. Uh, konting recap lang. Genesis means beginning or origin. Yung outline of the book, uh, meron siyang uh, two parts. Yung mankind in general at saka uh, patriarchs of Israel. Sa mankind in general, uh, chapters 1 to 11, syempre, nandun yung the creation, the fall of man, Noah and the flood, and the tower of Babel. Then naman sa uh, patriarchs of Israel, from Genesis 12 to 50, ito yung mga buhay ni Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. The book of Genesis concludes with the death of Joseph, and uh, kumbaga, this book begins in a garden, no? Garden of Eden, and ends in a graveyard. Kaya nga, what a revealing statement of the consequences of sin. So natapos siya noong inilibing na si Joseph the Dreamer. Alright, so nakakita ako ng uh, mga movie at saka telemovies no, ng mga Pilipino na Pinoy telemovies and uh, movie yung Exodus at saka yung Genesis. No? Nakatuwa. So, siyempre, saan nila kinuha yan? Ano yung inspiration nila? Na maaaring wala namang kinalaman sa biblical story or biblical book ng Genesis and Exodus. Pero, anyway, baga, nakatuwa lang kasi uh, mapapansin nyo yung mga sa mga movies na about sacrificing, about, kung baga saan nilang konsepto na kuha yan. So, for this evening, we'll talk about From Slavery to freedom. Ito yung book of Exodus na sinulat ni Moses na kung saan ay uh, napakadaming pangyayari at uh, napakadaming revealing na uh, baga pangyayaring pwede nating maintindihan. Alam nyo, since this book tells us about the Israel's bondage in Egypt and their deliverance by God through Moses, no, it was named Exodus na ang ibig sabihin ay, siyempre, exodus means going out no? or exit. Mag-exit. Kaya yung exodus, exit. Yung keyword dito na dapat nating uh, matutunan, kung baga yung dito uh, sa ating, as we discuss yung book of exodus, uh, kung baga, uh, tingin tayo ng mga something to learn about. No? Kung baga, yung pwede nating uh, learning for the day. Parang ganun. Isa sa mga learning for the day, eh, ang keyword dito ay redemption or to set free. No? Kasi nasa bondage sila. No? At ganun din sa buhay natin. Minsan may mga bondages tayo na kailangan nating mag-exodus. Alright? So, let's start. Alam nyo, the entire book, sa totoo lang, is filled with messianic types and symbols. No? Si Moses ang nasabing uh, sumulat nito, yung entire Pentateuch. Bakit si Moses? Tingnan natin. Kasi tingtitinan nyo yung, connect, connect, yung, yung connection niya doon sa New Testament. Sabi sa Luke 24, 44, He said to them, This is what I told you 
while I was still with you, everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the in the law of Moses and the prophets and the song. So, so ito yung uh, ito yung tinura na kung baga uh, uh, nagpapatukoy no from New Testament na tinuturo si Moses yung sumulat no kasi ang tawag doon ay law of Moses kaya nga Mosaic law parang ganoon sa John 5:46 naman if you believed Moses you would believe me for he wrote about me so dito no kumbaga uh, uh, mapapansin natin na kumbaga yung ikino-connect palagi kay Moses yung Pentateuch no from Genesis and then sa in the first uh, books na yon in Numbers, Deuteronomy, Leviticus at saka to Exodus kumbaga particularly parang ang tinutumbok palagi si Moses alam niyo Exodus is a continuation pala of the book of Genesis kasi because in Hebrew it begins with the word end no baka magkadugtong para Genesis end Exodus. This book, tung Geni- Exodus na to, no, presents basic information about the growth of the Hebrew nation from the family of Jacob. So naalala niyo ba si Jacob na naging Israel? So tingnan natin kung paano nag-grow. So mapapansin niyo dito sa sa diagram na ginawa natin, ano? Uh, ito yung sons of Jacob, ang pangalan niya naging Israel, kaya naging tribes of Israel. So si Jacob, meron siyang unang asawa, si Leia, yun yung elder sister na talagang gusto niyang si Rachel, no? yung younger sister. So under ni Leia, pinanganak niya si Ruben, si Simeon, si Levi, si Judah. No? At si Judah, eh, uh, dyan nang galing si King David. At si King David, dyan nang galing si King Solomon. No? Sila yung hari ng Juda at dyan galing yung lahi ni Jesus Christ. Kaya nga ang tawag sa kanya sa Bible, Lion of Juda. Okay. So papansin nyo si Leia, may isang anak. Yung sa 12 tribes of Israel, may isang anak na natatangi yung babae. Nako, meron pa nga itong story na parang merong rape story to. Parang ganun. Ano? Anyway, naging anak niya rin si Isaacar, si Sebulun, si anak ni Leia. At galing kay Levi, no? Galing sa lahi ni Levi si Moses. All right, si Moses na kapatid ni Aaron. Uh, si Aaron ang naging first priest, no, ng Israel at yung lahi ng Levi, uh, yung mga Levites na tinatawag. Sila yung mga naging uh, priest no, ng Israel. All right, doon naman sa bandang kanan ay si Rachel na kung saan ang anak niya si Joseph at si Benjamin. Si Joseph, magkaroon siya ng dalawang anak na lalaki doon sa asawa niyang Egyptian, si Manasseh at si Ephraim na naging part din no, ng tinatawag ng tribes of Israel. Ang, ang pinalitan nila si Levi at saka si, si Joseph. So si Manasseh at Ephraim. Kasi si Levi, wala siya naging sarili niyang lupa. Okay. And si Joseph, kumbaga, uh, nirepresent siya ng dalawa niyang anak. Si Benjamin naman, yung pinakabunso, siya naman, dyan naman galing si King Saul. Alright? So si King Saul, alam niyo naman, yung pinalitan ni King David. And then the others, si Zilpa, yung servant ni Leah, si Bilha, yung servant ni Rachel, nagkaanak din dyan si Jacob, si Gad, si Asher, si Dan, at si Naphtali. Alright? So in Exodus, no, it talks about yung growth of the Hebrew nation from the pra- family of Jacob. So, Next, tingnan natin. Sabi dito no, sa Exodus 1.5, The descendants of Jacob numbered 70 in all. Joseph was already in Egypt. So, alam naman natin yung story ni Joseph, nauna na siya sa Egypt para ginamit siya ng Panginoon para masagipin ang entire Israel. So, Exodus 12.37, sabi dito, The Israelites journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkoth, there were about 600,000 men on foot besides women and children. Okay, there are many types and uh, symbols no, na makikita natin dito sa Book of Exodus. Especially 
yung tabernacle. Kami ha, pag-uusapan natin in detail. Ano, ano yung tabernacle? Ano makikita doon? Bakit may tabernacle? Alright? Exodus records the giving of the Ten Commandments. Nako, yan. Sikat na sikat din yan. Uh, lalo na kapag kamahal na araw, laging yan ang pinapanood natin, Ten Commandments. No? It would be impossible sa totoo lang to understand much of the New Testament without the knowledge of this book. Oo, kasi nandito yung mga symbolism eh. Right, tingnan natin yung brief outline of the book of Exodus. Una, yung first part, syempre yung Exodus, yung going out, yung pag-exit nila sa sa Egypt. No? And then yung part 2, in Genesis chapter 19 to 24, yung the law, yung pagbigay ng tablet, yung pagbigay ng Ten Commandments. And then yung part 3, it's about the tabernacle, yung pinagawa sa kanila ng Panginoon, kung saan sila, excuse me, pwedeng sumamba. So, simulan natin sa Exodus, in the Exodus, in chapters 1 to 18. Ano ba nangyari dito? Alam nyo, sa the Exodus, no, merong uh, nahati rin siya sa iba't ibang parts. Doon sa pag-going out nila, sa pag-exit nila, tingnan, natin lang yung, ting, tingnan muna natin yung part A. Yung part A, no, uh, ito yung the enslavement of God's people, yung chapter 1. Okay, tingnan natin ano nangyari. Alam naman natin, namatay na si Joseph. No? Si Joseph, governor, the best there is. Kaya na-save ang Egypt. Kaya na-save ang Israel at si mga karating bansa because of the anointing of Joseph. At highly favored ng Pharaoh si Joseph. Pero namatay na si Joseph. May bago ng king. Nako, may bago ng Pharaoh. The new king. No? Itong, a new king came to the throne in Egypt and made nako, the Jews into slaves. Dati, ano nila yan, no? foreigners in their land na ginagalang, nirespeto because of Joseph. No? Kasi itong king na to, he knew the numbers ng Israel might be a threat to him. Oo, baka ma-outnumber na sila kasi tsaka pinagpapala talaga sila. Eh. So ang ginawa niya, he ordered the midwives to kill all male Hebrew babies. No, kitang-kita niyo dito, no? Uh, si Satan, he mga already Satan had gone to work, no? Trabaho na agad si Satan eh, no? To destroy the Hebrew race. Bakit? Bakit niya gustong i-destroy ang Hebrew race? So the promised redeemer could not be born. Yep. Pero failure siya. Now, sa part B ng pag-exit nila, no? Ing ang kumbaga itong part na to, it talks about the deliverer. Ito yung bida natin. Sino? Si Moses. It seemed God was doing nothing. No? Kasi ginawa silang slaves. Eh. Uh, talagang api. Parang ngayon, ano? just like now, during this time of pandemic, parang dami nagtatanong, walang ginagawa ang Diyos. Bakit hindi na hinto yung pandemic? Bakit ang gulo-gulo, ba't ang daming problema, ang daming anxiety ng mga tao? Pero sana, no, kagaya rin natin at ng mga Hebrews na to. No, had the Hebrews remembered what God had told Abraham no, sa Genesis 15.13, sana naalala nila. No, kasi parang sabi nila, parang wala na tayong naririnig sa Lord, parang pinabayaan tayo. Sana kung naalala lang nila yung sinabi ng Lord kay Abraham sa Genesis 15.13, ano sabi? And the Lord said to Abraham, no for certain no for certain that your offspring will be so, sojourners in a land that is not theirs and will be servants there and they will be afflicted for 400 years wow para to pilipinas ha? almost 400 years under spanish rule pero anyway no kumbaga ang lord Sinasabi niya na beforehand eh. Kung baga sa atin, no, parang ngayon, parang daming pandemic eh. Ay, may pandemic, parang ano yun? something to learn about. Pandemic, parang tulog ang Diyos. Pero kung aalalahanin lang natin, no, na sinabi rin sa Bible na kung baga, during the, the end times, no, people will be lovers of themselves. No? Kung baga magkakaroon ng mga ganito mga sitwasyon, Kaya may mga chaos ngayon, everything. So this, itong mga events na ito, talagang hindi natin maiwasang mangyayari. And yung God never gets in a hurry. And His 
plans are always perfect. Now, even though ang nangyari, all male Hebrew children were ordered to be killed by Pharaoh, God used the heart of Pharaoh's daughter to save his servant Moses na naging deliverer. Na para hindi matuloy yung balak ni Satan na ubusin yung Hebrew race. Meron din ganun na ginagawa sa buhay mo ang Panginoon. I'm sure no, His perfect plans are always at work sa buhay mo. Maghintay ka lamang at matuto tayong manampalataya. Pag-usapan natin yung bida natin, si Deliverer. No, at the age 40, si Moses, no, he killed an Egyptian sa pagtatanggol ng kapwa niya Hebrew. So, anong nangyari? He had to flee. Kailangan niyang tumakas. Makikita natin to, no na, na may connection din na sinulat sa Acts, sa Acts chapter 7, 23 to 29. No? When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his own people, the Israelites. No? He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian, so he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. The next day, Moses came upon two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But the other man was mistreating the other, pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? Hmm. When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. Mm-hmm. So, 40 years siya na prince of Egypt. And then, 40 years siya na baga OFW sa Midian. So, naging foreigner siya doon. While in Midian, eto na, at the age of 80, tinawag siya ng Panginoon. Moses was called by God to lead his people out of Egypt. Ayan. I remember I was 20 years old when I was called by God to go into ministry and uh, hindi pa ako naniniwala noon pero i realized no na i was only 20 when he called me and uh, he asked me come serve me no ang tanong ko sa inyo how young or old were you when god called you ay matanda na ako ako ay 65 na retired na ako hindi na hindi na para sa akin yan hello 80 nga si moses eh when he was called by God. Ikaw naman eh, batang-bata. Nako, ay eh, marami rin bata na tinawag para pagsilbihan si Jesus, uh, si, si Lord. No, si, si, uh, yung mother ni Jesus, si Mary. No, he, she was only what? 16, 17, 15? I don't know. Pero somewhere ganun, ganun edad. So, kahit bata ka, kahit may edad ka, eh yan ay numero lamang ang mahalaga yung puso na gusto magsilbi sa Panginoon. Okay, balikan natin. Tingnan natin yung brief outline of the book ng Exodus. No? Parang review lang. So, sa, sa uh, tatlong part siya na ahate, yung the Exodus, yung pag-alis nila doon sa Egypt. Yung second part, yun yung binigay yung law, yung Ten Commandments. No? At yung third part, yung tabernacle. So, sa Exodus, sabi natin, enslavement of God's people sa chapter 1, Pinanggit natin kanina, pinakilala natin sino yung deliverer. And then pag-usapan natin yung the ten plagues and the Passover and the Hebrews early freedom sa mga susunod na uh, slides na papakita ko sa inyo. Okay, letter C. The ten plagues and the Passover. Ano naman nangyari dito? In these chapters, alam nyo, Moses said to Pharaoh seven times. Ang kulit lang itong si Pharaoh eh. Sabi ni Moses eh, Uh, let my people go. Kasi God wanted His people to be free so they could serve Him. Right? Alam nyo ang nangyari? Kasi ang ulo ni Pharaoh, he refused. Therefore, God sent series of ten plagues upon the Egyptians. Not upon Egypt. The Egyptians particularly, hindi natamaan yung mga Uh, mga 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 Israelites these ten plagues are water turning to blood padala siya ng frogs lice flies livestock pestilence boils no boils ibig sabihin mga tawag doon pigsa hail locusts 
darkness. Grabe, nakatakot lahat to. And the killing of firstborn children. Ay, yun ang pinakamahirap to. <laughs> yung firstborn children. Ako, ako pa naman ay firstborn. Kung kayo buhay na nun, ako isa sa mga namatay. No, ako Egyptian ako. Pero kung ako ay um, Israelite, hindi ako damay. Kaya, kaya nga may Passover. Eh. Diba? Hindi lang uh, diniscuss dito yung ten plagues, kundi ito yung mas importante sa plague. It, it, yung Passover. The Passover deals with God's instruction so He would pass over their homes at midnight without taking lives of their firstborn. Pati ito yung mga anak ng hayop na firstborn, patay. Pero yung mga Israelite, hindi. Kaya hanggang ngayon, sinaselebrate nila yung Passover. No, kasi baga, it reminds them kung paano sila sinagip ng Panginoon. Ikaw, buhay ka pa ba hanggang ngayon? Masigla ka, malusog ka. No? Alam ba, na-experience mo ang Passover. Nako, sa mga nakaraang buwan at mga araw, madami nang namatay. Pero tayo ay uh, buhay na buhay. So, you're experiencing the Passover of God. Alam nyo, uh, sa second, uh, sa, doon sa bandang last part nung pinag-uusapan na natin ng chapters 14 to 18, ito naman yung the Hebrews' early freedom. No? No? pinalaya na sila ni ni ano ni uh, Pharaoh after the 10th plague which is na matay nga pati yung panganay na anak ni Pharaoh alam naman natin pag firstborn yun susunod na Pharaoh yun yung crown prince na pero namatay now, the Hebrews were set free sa wakas after na ika 10 ano yun sakuna or uh, sumpa may tawag din sa Tagalog eh, plague uh, parang salot na uh, parang ganun however eto na nakalaya nga sila however may however eh their faith was quickly tested saan nako sa Red Sea kasi nung paglaya nila pinahabol naman sila ni Pharaoh nagpalit ng isip si Pharaoh pulit talaga no gusto niya ubusin yung mga Israelites so ang nangyari uh, uh, doon sa Red Sea na yon na confront sila doon sa sa beach front sabi nila nako ni eh, din alam mo ba kami dito Moses para ma-analyze kami, maubos kami dito ng, ng mga Egyptian. Eh, mabuti pa ng servants kami doon, mga slaves kami, kumakain kami doon, kami hindi papatay. Ngayon, mauubos ata kami. Okay. Doon, ang ginawa ng Panginoon, no? sa Red Sea na yun, hinati niya. Yan, parang yung background ko. Kaya nga nakalagay dyan, Exodus, no? God is with us. Hinati niya. Paghati niya doon, doon sa, sa Red Sea na yun, pinadaan niya yung mga Israelites, sumunod yung mga Egyptian. Pagkatawid ng Israelites, ibinalik ng Lord yung tubig. Ayun. Nalibing sila ng buhay doon. Okay. Ano naman yung sumunod na pangyayari? No, doon din sa Hebrews Early Freedom from chapters 14 to 18, nagpalaglag naman ng mana from heaven ng Diyos. Kasi sabi nila, eh, wala ka naman kami makain dito eh. Di ba? So dito, describe yung uh, early wilderness wandering sila, yung manna from heaven, yung quail, everything, and yung appointment of the judges. Kasi pagod na pagod na si Moses sa lahat. Uh, sa lahat ang gumagawa. So, kung, baga, kung ikaw ay pastor ngayon, eh, kung gusto mong ma-encourage, basahin mo yung buhay ni Moses. No? Uh, siya ay ang hirap siguro ng kanyang ang daming murmuring, ang daming chismis, ang daming angal araw-araw. Binigyan mo na mana, binigyan sila ng Lord ng, alam mo, ang dami nilang angal. Pero anyway, ito yung, pag binasa niyo itong chapters na ito, ito yung ang matatagpuan natin. Pagkatapos nun, uh, pagkatapos ng mga ma- paglaglag ng mana, at saka uh, yung, yung kanilang mga murmurings, nag-appoint na si Moses ng mga judges. Kaya may sumulod na mga libro yung The Book of Judges. Anyway, So, tingnan natin. Halika natin yung brief outline para hindi tayo malito. Okay? Pagka binabasa natin. So, nagsimula siya sa Exodus, chapters 1 to 18. Ibig sabihin yung going out, no? yung pag-exit nila from slavery. So, doon sa, sa, sa part A nun, yung enslavement nila, pinakita doon. Tapos, dumating yung deliverer, si Moses. Nagpadala ng ten plagues ang Panginoon. At saka, nagkaroon sila ng Passover para hindi sila madamay. And then, Uh, nandun na sila sa wilderness, nakatakas na sila sa mga Egyptians, pero uh, 
uh, panayang angal nila, panayang murmur nila, nagpalaglag ang Diyos ng mana from heaven. Yun yung, pag, yun yung bread din na masarap. Pagkatapos, uh, nag-appoint na si Moses ng judges para makatulong niya doon sa kasi ano ba nagnakaw yung kambing yung isa kung bagay lahat yun concern ni Moses yun maliit malaki so ginawa niya nag-appoint siya ng judges at hanggang ngayon eh, kaya meron tayong mga judges no may mga korte tayo dito nakuha yung concept na yun meron taga taga judge sa mga concerns ng mga tao ngayon doon sa part 2 and part 3 ito naman yung the law no chapters 19 to 24 at yung the tabernacle Chapters 25 to 40. Tingnan natin kung ano nangyari dyan. Makichika tayo. Okay. The law. Chapters 19 to 24. Ano ba nangyari dito? Ano ba kwento dito? Alam nyo, when you teach kids nowadays about the tablet, no, the tablet used by Moses, they might be thinking of this kind of tablet. iPad <laughs> or Samsung Galaxy, whatever. No? Kaya lilinawin nyo kanong klaseng tablet. Ano, three months after leaving Egypt, The Israelites were at Mount Sinai. Now, there, God made known His purpose in saving them. Nako, bakit nga ba sinayis sa lahat ng Panginoon? Ano ba yung purpose? Tingnan natin, basahin natin sa Exodus chapter 19 to 3 to 6. Then Moses went up to God and the Lord called him, called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. Your, you, your, you yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you, carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Ay, ganda naman ang sinabi. Sabi that although the whole earth is mine, You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Wow! No, yun yung purpose ng Lord. Why did God save them? Yun na yun. Yun na mismo. To be His chosen people. His treasured possession. Alam mo mga kapatid, maaaring hindi ka hudyo ngayon. Pero kung tinanggap mo ang Panginoong Yesu Kristo bilang Panginoong Tagapagligtas, you are His treasured or treasured possession. You are, no? His, uh, you are part of His family. No? Para sa iyo, ang mga pangako niya na sinabi niya lahat sa Bible. In Exodus 20, no? ito na yung Ten Commandments na binagay sa kanila. Ang sabi dito, Uh, ano-ano ba yung mga Ten Commandments na to particularly? Kasi may ibang version ng Ten Commandments. Eh. No? Uh, tingnan natin ano yung sinabi ng, uh, ng Panginoon sa Ten Commandments sa Exodus 20. Sabi dito, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You have no other gods before me. Number one, you shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Number two. Sa ibang version, iba yan. Okay? Pero ito, yung tamang version, yun yung number two. Number three, okay? Ano yung number three? You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God for the Lord, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses His name. Number four, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Number five, uh, ano yung number five? Tingnan natin. Honor your father and your mother, okay? So, may promise to. Ito lang yung may promise. So that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Oh, number six, you shall not murder. Seven, you shall not commit adultery. Number eight, you shall not steal. Number nine, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbors. Number ten, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. 
you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, uh, your neighbor's house, or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. In other words, wag kang maingitin. Alright, yun yung sampu, Ten Commandments na binabadon. Ang tanong, how did Jesus sum up these commandments in the New Testament? Matthew 22, 37-40, Jesus replied, Love your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Second, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on to these two commandments. So, two commandments sinamap ni Jesus, yung ten. Okay? Yung ten mosaic law, yung ten commandments, kinawa nilang 669 or 696 yata sa, sa Jewish tradition. Sinamap ni Jesus ng two. Kasi simple lang ang buhay, pinahirapan natin. Buti na lang dumating si Jesus, di ba? Remember, the Sabbath day, by keeping it holy, no, not repeated in the New Testament. What was the purpose of the law? Okay. Galatians 3.19-24 to Why then was the law given at all? It was added because of the transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. A mediator, however, implies more than one party. But God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely no. Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But Scripture has locked up everything under the control of sin so that was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Importante naman ang law, pero ang maganda kay Jesus Christ. Instead of law, yung pag-ibig niya, ang pinalit niya. Sabi sa Romans 5.20, the law was brought. So, in, the, the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Ayan. Eh, isipin nyo nga naman kung wala naman nag-violate, eh di wala namang batas. Ah, di ba? O huwag kang mag... Huwag kang mag-run ng red light. O tatanggalin na yung lahat ng mga traffic lights kasi wala naman nagbabilate ng law. Pero alam nyo, the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. So nag increase yung scene, pero maganda si Jesus Christ. Meron siyang grace. Okay? Meron siyang grace na pinalit doon sa law. So balikan natin. The Exodus, part 1, part 2, the law, at yung part 3, the tabernacle. Ano ba nangyari sa tabernacle? Ano ba makikita natin dito? So, mapansin nyo, yung diagram na yan, meron siyang, para siyang courtyard, no? Uh, para siyang court na, na, parang basketball court, parang ganun. Papasok ka, may entrance area, isa lang ang entrance yan, tapos makikita mo yung altar, and then yung laver, and then holy place, and then the most holy place. Okay. Isa-isahin natin yan. At saka ano-ano yung makikita dyan? At ano yung mga importance ito, mga symbols na to? Alam nyo, God instructed Moses to build a tabernacle no? and to furnish it according to his exact specifications. Ayan, yan ang itsura niyan. Okay, papasin nyo may mga tents around kasi yan yung mga tribes of Israel na nakatira dyan. Alam niyo, this sacred structure became the center. no? Parang halimbawa, uh, di ba mapapansin nyo sa bawat town, makikita mo sa magkatabi yung munisipyo, yung simbahan, may basketball court pa nga madalas kasi doon nagtitipon-tipon yung tao pag fiesta, di ba? So, lagi yan sa bawat town, no? lagi magkakasama yung mga yan, munisipyo, simbahan, basketball court, or parang uh, park parang ganon. So ganun din yung ano, ano yung setup ng panahon nila Moses. No, tong sacred structure nito became the center of Jewish life for centuries to come. Every part of it had 
spiritual significance and symbolism na dapat nating maintindihan no para mas maintindihan natin yung New Testament pag binabasa natin alam niyo the tabernacle was uh, surrounded by a court okay uh, there was only one entrance to the to the court now by gate which was like ang ang kanilang panukat noon ay cubits no 20 cubits daw yon pero ito 30 feet wide okay so pagka pagka hindi na mo siya i uh, convert men 20 cubits daw 30 feet wide naalala ko lang si Goliath 9 cubits yun eh no? imagine niyo kung gaano kalaki yung tao na yun. almost ano yun 15 15 feet ganung katangkad anyway tingnan uli natin yung tabernacle so yung tabernacle napapalibutan siya ng tribes of Israel no sa dulo sa Naphtali sa bandang itaas niya sumunod si Asher and then si Dan diyan nakatent nakalagay yung tent ng mga kanilang mga tribo sa kaliwa naman sa west no papansin niyo si uh, si Manasseh, si Benjamin, si Ephraim, sa east makita nyo si Issachar, Zebulun at saka si Judah. Kasi yung, yung Levites wala silang ano eh, wala silang pwesto kasi nga uh, mabaga sila yung priest kasi. Okay? So tingnan natin, in the court and tabernacle there were six pieces of furniture na matatagpuan natin no sa sa court at sa loob ng tabernacle okay tingnan natin yung kumbaga pag sinabi ng tabernacle kumbaga para isipin niyo parang simbahan natin ngayon parang ganoon okay as you enter the gate no pagpasok mo dun sa gate makikita mo kagad you will see first the altar or no, the altar of burnt offering no or ang tawag dito ay the brazen altar. Ano itsura niyan? Ayan. Ito yung the altar of burnt offering. The the uh, the brazen altar. Anong anong purpose nito? This is where they present their sacrifices. Okay? They were to place their hands on the head of the animal, okay? And then iko-confess nila yung sins nila which symbol symbolically transferred their sin to the animal. Okay? Then, they will kill the animal and the priest will apply the blood to the proper place. This thought, no, the people, about the penalty of sin is death. So, ginagawa nila yun, pinapatay nila yung animals, no, lalagay nila yung kamay nila sa ulo ng animals para matransfer na yung sin nila doon. Pagkatapos, papatayin and then yung blood, ipapahid sa proper place. Mamaya, pag-uusapan natin saan pinapahid. And then, Dito, natuturuan ang mga Israelites na kapag ikaw yung nagkasala, ang katumbas niyan ay kamatayan. Which is, hanggang ngayon naman, applicable yung principle na yan. Okay? So, the next piece na makikita mo pagkatapos ng brazen altar ay uh, uh, yung leave of bronze. Okay? Uh, the, the lever of bronze. Okay? Anong, ano to? Anong, uh, anong, purpose nito. So ganyan ang itsura niyan. So sa ating madaling salita ay eh, parang ano yan ano. Parang hugasan ng kamay parang ganoon. The word laver means place of washing. Now from which we get mm, word na lavatory, no. Tama nga hugasan ng kamay. This was placed between the tabernacle and the brazen of altar. Okay, so nasa gitna siya. So Bakit? Dito si Aaron and his sons, kasi mga Levites sila, sila mga priests, could wash their hands and feet before entering the tabernacle. Alam nyo, the laver represents the need for cleansing from sin before entering into God's presence. Kaya nga humingi tayo ng tawad, kaya lagi tayo nag ng ng forgiveness, nag tayo sa Panginoon no, to cleanse us from his sins. Now, for the Christian naman, it means following the instructions in 1 John 1 9. Ano ba yun? If we confess our sins, kagayon sinabi ko nina, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Yun, another ano na po, learning for the day. Di ba? If you will just confess your sins, nako, faithful and Panginoon at just. Ibig sabihin, parehas, patas. No, na ikaw ay patatawarin sa kasalanan mo, ipipurify ka pa sa lahat ng iyong unrighteousness. 
Alam niyo, after washing in the laver, yung priest naman will enter the first room. Yun yung tinatawag na the holy place. Ayan, ito yung, yung mas malaking part. Okay? Yung mas maliit na part na room, yan yung holy of holies. Eh. Sa holy place, makakita tayo ng three pieces of uh, furnitures naman dyan. Yan yung golden lampstand, the table of shoe bread, and altar of incense. Ako, sa isayin natin to Yung uh, three pieces of furniture na nandun sa holy place para mas maintindihan natin. On the south wall no, was the golden lampstand. Yun ang makikita natin. <coughs> Which gave light as, syempre, parang ilaw ng mga priest when about, when uh, kung gagawin nila yung mga duties nila. So, sabi nila, 94 pounds daw ang bigat nito. Ba, mabigat-bigat. Parang isang parang isang uh, binatilyong lalaki or parang isang babae. Ganun yung pounds. Ganun yung bigat. Na kung ang halaga daw halimbawa ng ginto ngayon, ano ba, 450 an ounce, no? eh kapag uh, binenta mo to ang halaga ay 676, 800 dollars. Sabah, malaking pera pala to. Anyway, yan yung itsura niyan. Yan. So, ang tawag dyan, ay golden lamb stand. Okay. Para yun yung mag-ailaw ng mga priest. On the north wall naman was the table of shoe bread. Okay? Hindi po shoe bread. Sorry, mali yung pagka-type ko. Made of acacia wood no? and overlaid with pure gold. Gano'n ba kataas to? 2 feet high, 3 feet wide long, and 18 inches wide. So, hindi naman siya ganun kalakihan. On the table were 12 small loaves na parang ang itsura niya pancake. Okay? Tinapa ito. No? Representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Tapos lahat ng dishes and spoons were pure gold. Okay? This food, no? yung mga tinapa niyon, was not for God to eat. Okay? Unlike ng mga paniniwala natin, oh, pag may manamatay, mag-aatang tayo or mag-aatang tayo doon sa mga mahal birhen, whatever. Hindi ito yung purpose nun. Okay? Uh, it, it was a symbolic reminder of Israel's dependence upon God for their daily needs. So, yun yung purpose at a symbolic reminder doon. Yun yung itsura niya. Yan. Yan po yung tinatawag na uh, 12 small loaves. Makapansin nyo. Ayan. Mm -hmm. Tsaka yung mga puro ginto. Yung ano. Okay, the last piece of furniture was the altar of incense. Ano naman to? The priests were to burn incense on it twice daily as an act of worship. Ngayon ka ngayon naman yung mga pari natin sa Catholic Church, di ba? Nag-burn sila ng incense, okay? It represented a uh, continual intercession. No? Sa panahon natin ngayon, sa ating mga Krisyano, eh, pinapaalalahan na natin na meron dapat tayong continual intercession. Para si Jesus, ngayon, ini-intercede siya para sa atin. So, ikaw, kumbaga sabi nga eh, pray without ceasing. Ayan, yung tinatawag na altar of incense. Alright. So, mapansin natin ha, review lang. Para mas madali nating maintindihan. Pagpasok mo, may kita mo yung shoe bread, yung candlesticks, no, tsaka altar of incense. Ngayon, papasok ka na doon sa most holy place or ang tawag nila, Holy of Holies. Okay, next come the Holy of Holies which contains just one piece of furniture pero importante ito. Ang tawag doon, the Ark of Covenant. Ako, kung nanonood kayo ng Indiana Jones, no? malamang alam niyo yung lagi nilang hinahanap, yung the Ark of Covenant. Okay. Kung papansin ninyo, ito yung itsura ng ating tabernacle. Okay? Ano yung holy of holies, yung mas maliit na part ng room? Dito, mat makikita natin sa Matthew 27, 51. At the moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split. Bakit? Kasi si Jesus, He gave Himself as the atoning sacrifice. Okay? Yung blood niya. Okay? Kasi before... They need to go through those process and laws and everything. Pero dito, nag-symbolize from top to bottom, napunit yung temple curtain. Kasi hindi ka basa-basa makapasok doon, machuchugi ka doon. Okay? So dapat, umbaga, mga priest lang. Kasi nilalagyan pa nila ng, ng belt yung priest para kung sakali ilahin nila kasi baka hindi makayanan yung, 
alam mo yun, yung presence doon at mamatay sila. Pero ngayon, wala na. No, napunit na yun, ibig sabihin, pinalitan na ng banal ng Diyos, ng Panginoon Yesu Kristo, ang pagpapatawad sa kasalanan mo. Pag-usapan natin yung isang piece ng furniture na may kita daw doon sa loob ng Holy of Holies. Ito yung pinasikat ni Indiana Jones kasi, kasi nahanap-hanap nila in the, the, the Ark of the Covenant. What three things were contained in the Ark? Ano yung nasa loob ng Ark? Alamin natin. Sabi sa Exodus 25.16, Then put in the Ark the tablets of the Covenant Law which I will give you. Una, nandoon inilagay yung tablets. Okay? Hindi yung iPad, pero yung tablets na binigay kay Moses yung Ten Commandments. Ano, ano yung dalawa pa na nakalas sa loob ng Ark of the Covenant? No? Hebrews 9.4 no? Which had the golden altar of incense and the gold covered Ark of the Covenant. This Ark contained the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. So yung dalawa pa doon, yung sample, kumbaga, yung preserved gold jar of mana. Ibig sabihin, parang, yun yung parang uh, pagpapaalala sa kanila, yung provision ng Panginoon. No? Uh, mamumulot ka lang ng pagkain. And then yung Aaron staff that had budded. No? Naalala niyo yung, yung, yung uh, staff ni Aaron na, na, na mulaklak. No? So, sa kanan natin pagkwentuhan yun dahil mahabang kwento yun. Ayan, yan yung mga matatagpuan doon sa Ark of the Covenant. Yung two gold uh, cherubim or cherubim sa Tagalog or angels with wings touching were above the Ark of the Covenant. Yun yung pinakatakip. Okay? On top of the Ark was the mercy seat upon which the high priest sprinkled the blood on the day of the atonement. Ayun, doon pala pinapahid yung mga nagpapa-aton. No? Ibig sabihin sa atonement, at one. Yung aton, at one. Pinag-iisa. Ibig sabihin, pagka nagkasala ka para lumayo ka sa Diyos. So, at one, atonement, pinag-iisa uli kayo. Parang ganun. E ngayon, meron ng Heso Kristo. No? He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Okay? So, siya yung atonement natin. Sabi nga, when was the final atonement made? Eh, alam na this, di ba? Romans 5, 6, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. You and me. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Right? Tama. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. Right? I'll die for my wife, for my kids. Sabi sa verse 8, but God, demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Boom! Kahit na ano sama na ugali mo, Christ died for you. Amen? Amen. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from the God's wrath through Him? Wow! Balikan na natin. Brief outline of the book, the Exodus, di ba? enslavement nila, tumating si Deliverer, si Moses, pinadala yung Ten Plagues and sa kay Pharaoh, and then the Passover, and then the Hebrews, the early freedom, yung sa Red Sea, yung manna from heaven, yung appointment of judges. So doon natin makikita yan. And then the law, yun yung tablet, the Ten Commandments, and then the tabernacle. All right. So, maraming maraming salamat po. I hope na meron kayo naintindihan at na, natutunan. No? So, pinaka, pinaka gusto ko lang bigyan ng emphasis. No? Ang dami nilang pinagdaanan. No? Pero ngayon, pinagpala ka. Meron kang Yeso Kristo. Meron ka Holy Spirit na nagagabay sa'yo. Si Jesus Christ nandun na ng mga panahon na yun. Pero alam nyo, I would love to live sa panahon ngayon. Dahil mas talagang kitang-kita ko yung pag-ibig at pagmamahal ng Diyos. Mula sa provision niya, hanggang sa forgiveness niya, hanggang sa pag-exemplify niya, pagpapakita niya ng pagmamahal. Sa so, pamagitan ng pagbibigay niya ng dugo, namatay siya para sa iyo. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you Lord God for the going out. Exodus. May this represent Lord the going out for us from sins the going out for us from 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 death 
from sickness, from many problems, from anxiety, everything around. Lord, Lord, thank you for reminding us that you are not a sleeping God. That you will see us through. And all this symbolism, all these reminders, Lord God. This would be a good guiding principle, Lord God, for us to live by as good Christians, as good believers. We thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the book of Exodus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You are blessed. God bless you. Uh, thank you. Happy 36th anniversary, LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. God bless you. I'll see you in, uh, on Sunday uh, for another uh, teaching, another preaching. We'll talk about good, better, best. And I'll see you next Wednesday also for the continuation of uh, walk, uh, walk Through the Bible. So maraming maraming salamat po. I'll see you. God bless. Bye-bye.